So I'm really excited to be here to be able to share in this seminar with Mark and Hayden in this freaking awesome facility. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Debbie Cohen. I am a doctor in physical therapy and a professional powerlifter. The achievements that I'm most proud of have to do with deadlifting over four times my body weight raw and breaking 20 all-time world records in a period of three years. And while I am proud of having reached all those things, I don't think that they tell the full story of who I am or how I got to where I am. So I wanted to share a little bit more with you guys and tell you about the things that I learned along the way. About 10 years ago, I got obsessed with a single question. And that was, what makes some people dream and never achieve anything? And some other people literally just crush it at everything that they do. What did I need to do at that point today to set up myself to succeed? At that time, you know, I was 15, 16. I wasn't the most popular. I wasn't the prettiest. I didn't have the best grades. I wasn't the smartest. I didn't come from the wealthiest family. And I don't know if you guys know, but I'm originally from Venezuela, so the competition was high. Like a lot of the people who I surrounded myself with were all of those things. So I was scared that because I didn't have the same things, I wouldn't have the same opportunities as the rest of those people, the rest of my classmates, and the rest of the people that I surrounded myself with. And I wondered, you know, were those people just lucky? Like, were they just gonna have everything that they wanted because of where they came from? But if I was truly honest with myself, I realized that not all the people who have perfect upbringings are able to be successful in the future. Because not all of them lack three really important components, and that is to have hunger, to have drive, and to be ambitious, from what I could observe. For example, what do you think would be the upbringing or the future of a person who has the following upbringing? Because assuming that most people think that what you've been through determines who you are or where you can go. All right, so here's the story. This is a person who was born to a mother and a father. The father was never there. The mom was 13 years old. The kid was constantly abused multiple times because it didn't have anyone to take care of it. After that, the kid ends up um, having a child around the same age as her mom, and um, the child dies. Do you predict that the future of this person is going to be successful, or is it more concerning? And does anyone know by now whose story I'm telling? Anyone? That's the story of Oprah Winfrey. She's one of the most successful and influential and powerful icons of our era. So whatever story you're telling yourself about why you can't achieve something, you know, stop, especially if it's self-depreciating. What you've been through doesn't determine who you are or where you can go. I'll tell you about the biggest gift that I received ever in my life, like throughout the years. Best gift, the best thing that could happen to me is to be told that I suck that I can't do something. That is literally what fuels my fire. Throughout, and that's really what taught me about the value of discipline, of persistence, of hard work, of work ethic, of consistency. But more importantly, those things, the times where people have told me that I can't do something, or that I'm not good enough, it taught me to raise my standards, because they might be right. Maybe what I was doing at that point in time just wasn't good enough. What I was doing wasn't cutting it. So I had to really raise my standards for myself. The first time I encountered that type of resistance was not making it into the national soccer team. Then throughout my life, I was constantly told by my parents, my grandparents, everyone who surrounded me that I could never have a career in fitness. I was always obsessed with fitness since I was six years old and I started playing soccer. So everyone in my family told me I couldn't. There's no way I was going to make a career in fitness. I come from a family that's pretty traditional. My uncles are doctors. My stepbrothers and sisters are lawyers. My my mom is an entrepreneur, my sister graduated in, in econ and finance. So what was I gonna do? I was always gonna be a personal trainer. You know, all my family made fun of me. Like, what are you gonna do with that? Then I was told by my CrossFit coach, who I really admired, that there's no way I could ever make it in any iron sport. I asked him, hey, what do you think I should do? Should I focus on CrossFit and weightlifting or powerlifting? And he said, honestly, step whatever it is that you do, you're not, it doesn't matter because you're not gonna be good at any of those things. That's what he said. And then, this is a story that I don't share with many people and not a lot of people know, but I got kicked out of PT school after my first semester. Okay, for getting a 74 
instead of a 75 minute test. And I'll tell you, in all those situations, I was able to come out on top. I made it to the national soccer team, I was the team captain for five years, I was able to create for myself a pretty successful uh, career in fitness. I made it to be the top three best powerlifter in the world in all weight classes, made male or, male or woman. Male or woman, yeah. <laughs> and I graduated on top of my class from one of the most challenging programs in physical therapy in the nation with close to 4.0 GPA. And I, I'm not telling you all this, those things because I want to brag about myself or because I want to tell you how good I am, but rather so you can see that it's not, a, it's not an easy pro, pro, or process, you know? All of the things that I set myself to do didn't come easy for me. In fact, there was a lot of challenges and resistance along the way. If you guys are in this room right now, you're among the smartest people in California. Not only because you decided to come here and listen to me talk, <laughs> but because they assume that you're the type of person that is constantly looking to improve yourself. You're constantly listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, watching YouTube videos. It's nonstop, it's a constant pursuit for knowledge. I assume that you're that type of people. But some of you might wonder, why is it that if I'm doing all of these things, I'm attending to all of these seminars, I'm listening to all of these books, I'm pushing myself so hard, why is it that, you know, John is doing the same exact thing and getting some life-changing results out of it and succeeding so much, but I'm not? And I'll tell you what that is. It's because of what those people do after they put down that book, after that seminar is over, and when no one else is watching. All these books, teachers, coaches, seminars, are not there to just hype you up for five minutes, but they're there to sharpen your mind and to create a mindset that's ready for work. They're there to teach you how to create habits that will take you to where you want to go. Obviously, you need all of these books, you need all of these teachers, you need all of those coaches to gather the necessary information that you need, but knowledge doesn't mean anything if you can't apply it or if you don't apply it, if you don't take action after it. So, like I said, it's about what you do after. After the motivation fades, after the seminar is over. Are you willing to learn from your failures, from your mistakes, and keep pushing forward? Or are you going to take it easy and take, it, take a step back and go back to your average life, to your average job, to your average house, to watch an average show? And don't mean, I don't mean to offend any of you guys. Some, some of you guys may be fine with being average. I'm just not. So turn that shit off, turn that TV off, and pick up a book and learn something. But after you learn something, then apply it, because that's the most important part of it. So what if some people succeed and some don't? Because when failure overcomes them, those people are willing to push even harder, harder. And some just take it easy. So ask yourself, who are you? Are you prepared to suffer today to have a better tomorrow? Or are you going to take it easy today and suffer tomorrow as a consequence? What type of person are you? I'll tell you one last story because I don't want to bother, bother you guys so much or bore you guys so much. But if I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to raise your standards. Because when you have higher expectations for yourself, that's when you make shit happen. And you expect more of yourself. That's the only way you can make a long lasting result in. How do you do that? You do that by changing all of your shoulds into musts. Should is something that you do when you feel like it. Like, I should be nicer to my boyfriend, you know? Or, I should be eating better. Or, I should stay off social media while I'm working or while I'm studying. And it's something that you do when you feel like it. But when it's a must, find a way to make that shit happen. For example, our bodies are a reflection of our own physical standards. When you must have your body look a certain way, then you follow that plan to the T. It's an obligation, it's a non-negotiable, it's something that you have to do. And that's how you actually get results. And what's gonna, what's gonna really take to raise your standards? It's the people you surround yourself with. It's the people that you study with in school, it's the people that you work with, that you network with, it's the people that you hang out with the most. Are those people playing the game way harder than you? Or are they just being conformist? When I played soccer, when I started playing soccer, right at the beginning, I refused to play with girls. I said, I'm, I only, I'm only going to play with guys because they just look better than them. They're, they're better skilled, they're faster, they're stronger, 
they're unforgiven in the field, you know, that's who I want to play with. That's who I, I, I aspire to be, like those guys. So I figured, you know, if I just try really hard to look like them, how they run, how they kick the ball, and how they play, then I might actually get better. And I did. So I draw from those experiences to kind of like dictate everything, everything else that I do in my life. Like from, from really, from that, that, that eureka moment that I had when I was eight years old playing soccer. In powerlifting, I've moved from cities to be able to train at a, at, a, at a better gym, to have access to better coaches, to be able to train with people who are better than me. And some people, you know, some of you guys might not have those goals, but at that point in time, it was important for me. I've done the same thing in grad school. I tried to study with the, with the smartest people, try to surround myself with the people who can elevate me to be better. So I'll end this with, with one question for you guys. What aspects of your life do you think you need to change from being a should into a must in order to get you to where you want to be? Okay. Competition can be really healthy, and that's the, ba the very basis of Super Training Gym is based off of that. Super Training Gym has been around for over 12 years. Part of the reason why it's been able to survive the way that it has, as you guys know, it's a free gym. Well, the funny part about it being a free gym is we don't have very many members. <laughs> because powerlifting is difficult. It's not made for everybody. Powerlifting hurts. It's painful. It's time consuming. It'll break down your body, your mind, and sometimes even your soul. I don't know about you guys, but I care about this stuff so much. There has been many times that I have driven home from the gym in tears over a workout. I'm getting goosebumps, kind of even thinking back to some of those moments. And the reason why I get emotional even about just thinking about it is because those are the times that made me better. It was the pressure that created what you guys see in front of you today, not myself, uh, this entire huge facility that we're in this over 20,000 square foot facility that we're in. My brother, years ago, passing, you guys know some of the story, but a lot of that had to do with where this facility is today and where Slingshot is today and where I'm at today. Uh, without my brothers and without my parents, uh, I, I don't really understand uh, what I would do with myself. So when I, when I try to share information with people, I always try to share with them the fact that I feel that I'm a byproduct of a very, very good and very loving parenting. And my dad is here today and he's a huge part of my motivation, so let's give him a hand. <laughs> but I know a lot of people start out behind in life and they don't have a dad or they don't have a mother that cares about them more. Maybe their parents are into drugs or alcohol or whatever it is, and it's, the chips sometimes can really be stacked against you. That's not my story. My story is much different than I. I feel that I was given an opportunity to start out ahead of people. And now for a living, I get to do what I love to do most, which is making the world a better place to lift. And I feel that I was born to do that. And one of the reasons that I feel that way is because I didn't have a lot of other crap to worry about growing up as a kid. My mother, growing up as a kid, had to raise other, uh, other siblings because her parents had drug and alcohol problems. I, I don't know what that's like. So I always think it's important to share with you guys kind of where I'm coming from rather than just saying, hey, like, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. All that stuff's great. But for some people, it's really hard to understand how and when can you make that jump if your life is so damn hard to begin with. The one thing that you need to understand is that everybody's life is difficult. Everyone has things in their life that are hard to do. And one of the things I hated more than anything in my life was getting up in front of people and talking. Now it's what I have to do for a living. I have to be able to communicate. If I'm gonna be the people's coach, I need to get up here and I need to be, get people fired up about training. I need to go across the country and talk to people throughout this country and teach them about strength training. But if I'm going to teach you how to lift, I feel it's my obligation to teach you how to live. Everybody in this room is different. There's like 8 billion people in the world. And we're all born with a different, uh, different fingerprint. 
And there's a, there's, there's a reason for that. There's a reason why we're all different. And I'm a big believer in being different. I'm a big believer in really taking advantage of that and really like celebrating that. If you're different, then be different. If you like to dance after you do a big lift, then go ahead and celebrate that and be that person. If you're somebody that likes to be stoic and you don't get fired up from music and you like to lift a certain way, then be that way. If you're somebody that's emotional, don't let other people's thoughts creep into your mind about how you shouldn't be emotional. Be the person that you are.